let's look at uh, this uh, concept of MBO management by objectives in um, a little more uh, detail right the first uh, step in uh, management by objectives is to create a departmental target now this departmental target must be something which follows from the corporate target right if you look at uh, the manufacturing uh, department right the manufacturing department we could say that uh, the department target is to improve the quality of output now this is something which has come from the corporate objective the corporate objective might well be to enter a new market segment and the new market segment might have more demanding customers hence quality standards within the company need to necessarily improve so from the corporate objective we come to the departmental objective right the departmental target which is to improve the quality of output this is step 1 now step 2 is we need to create a sub target a sub target which defines this target in um, a more uh, operational way in a more actionable way right quality of output one way in which it could be uh, made actionable is by saying that um, let us reduce the percentage of rejects if that is our target if the target of the manufacturing department is to reduce the percentage of rejects right that would help it to achieve step one okay now now that this has uh, been agreed on by the department let's move to step three step three we are saying that this uh, sub target needs to be broken down into individual manager performance measures the manufacturing department comprises several uh, functional people right there are different parts of the manufacturing process there are different kinds of functions in manufacturing so each one of these uh, is represented by an individual so performance measures for these different individuals must all coalesce into step 2 which is reducing the percentage of rejects now once this is done once um, we have broken down the sub target into individual manager targets the last step in mbo is performance review at agreed time periods we need to review each individual uh, in the department must be aware that his performance will be reviewed at a particular point in time right now he knows what the target is he knows what he has to achieve okay this needs to be reviewed so this is uh, the concept of management by objectives and this allows the organization to ensure that that hierarchy of objectives we talked about actually operates in practice um, let's see what um, the uh, gentleman who spoke about uh, strategy implementation earlier uh, let's see what he has to say about this issue of organizational structure the corporate organizational structure is often the first thing that's tinkered with to align the organization for the implementation of strategy corporate structures are many and varied and they're set at the discretion of the CEO and the team he has assembled 
If you divvy up the strategy amongst the managers, the CEO will likely adopt one or more elements of the following structures. So first you have entrepreneurial structures where everyone is a generalist and the CEO or the general manager of that business unit makes all the decisions. You may have a functional structure where you have specialized roles that are defined and staffed accordingly. The CEO establishes an executive committee for making all the major decisions. You may then get to a point where you have a divisional structure where business units themselves have resources and manage their own businesses separately. Decision making becomes more decentralized. A matrix structure is where you have a functional and a business unit structure combined at the same level in the organization. That is to say that employees have two superiors to report to. A functional manager, so for instance the CFO, as well as a business unit manager which would be the president of say a particular division. This type of structure combines the stability of the functional structure with the flexibility of the business line structure. And it's best used when the external environment is complex and changing. So you'll see this type of structure in say the aerospace industry. And finally we have a network structure. And this is an interesting and emerging structure where most of the activities are outsourced to strategic partners and that the organizational structure is in many respects the virtual organization. It's best used when the environment is unstable and there's constant change in conditions requiring innovation and a quick response. The structure provides the company with the flexibility to cope with change and the shifting patterns of trade and competition while allowing it to focus on its distinctive competencies. We see this structure evolving more and more in the uh, public sector, in government.